Hi, I'm Anna, and you're listening to Athena's Life Podcast. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to today's episode. This episode is the second episode of the Meaning of Words series. If you have not seen the previous one, I highly recommend you to go and check it out. The previous episode was about the word love. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the word, drum rolls, the word hate. So, Let's go back to the beginning. First recorded before the year 900, the word hate as we know it today comes from various Germanic roots like Dutch, Haten, Old Norse, Hatta, Gothic, Hattan, and German, Hassen. These words have then been translated into Old English going to Hatian, then to Middle English, Hatian, and then giving the word, as we all know and use today, hate. So, from the very beginnings of the English language, the word hate has been around. It is quite interesting how, from the start in the premises of a language, we have used certain words to describe certain great and big emotions that everybody feels at one point in their life. And the word hate is one of the most common used word and one of the words that you will find a definition for in each and every languages in the world. So maybe I'm geeking out a little bit, but I do find it really cool how We have been using a word that has been around for more than a thousand years. That means some serious deep shit, like, damn. Like love, hate is an emotional state. It means that hate is a feeling that you feel with your whole whole being. You become the hatred. You feel it go through your veins, you feel it go through your whole entire body as you feel it. It is a state of mind. But it is also a very specific state of mind because, again, like love, it requires an external agent. Let me explain this. When I say that hate and love require external agents, I don't mean that you need an FBI agent to be there. I mean that for you to love or hate something, you need someone or something to be hated or loved. So you need an outsider, you need something else for you to feel that emotion. Which is why sometimes we can mix love and hate towards something, because these are feelings that we cannot feel on our own. These are feelings that we need to feel with something else, and often these are kind of similar. There are ways in which the brain is so strong where it can make both love and hate be the same. So, whether we like it or not, when we love or hate something or someone, we place an emotional weight on the outsider. It becomes draining, and by that, we feel the emotion and we project it onto someone else. We're then projecting our emotional weight on the outsider so it makes us feel better. In order to love someone, you have to express that love and in order to hate someone, you have to express that hate. Expressing it puts the inner draining weight, the emotional weight, from us to the outsider. It makes us feel better, but then The outsider becomes an insider. For example, if we love or hate an object, 
This object has no conscience and therefore couldn't give two shits about how we feel about it. But if we do love or hate a person, they become the recipient. They receive this emotional weight and they start feeling it. There's this theory that if you smile to someone in the road, they will smile to the next person they encounter. It is a cutesy law theory that it is fun to hear about, but it is kind of true. If someone decides to be extremely mean to you at the start of the day, no matter how good your day was, your day is going to be ruined and you're going to keep that emotional weight and you're going to push it to someone else. This emotional weight is just being transmitted from one to the other. We experience this emotional weight so we project it on others and that's when it can become dangerous. Because others might feel this emotional weight and then inflict it on others again. And this is how we get kind of a butterfly effect from one little wrong in your life to someone else's big wrong in another time. In the end, we might actually want to be careful on the way we use the word hate. Because it is such a big word and it can have such a snowball effect that it can be scary. For example, children. Let's go back to the initial of the initial. When you hate or love someone, you teach them how to love or hate someone. That's what we've been saying in the past episodes. But children, they use the word hate blatantly. They do not know how to express their current emotion because they have no idea what other emotions they can feel. So you might casually hear them say, Oh, I hate this, I hate that, I hate you, I... I hate everything. But usually they don't actually mean it in the way that we feel the word hate. They mean discomfort, anger, misunderstanding. And it is clear for us as adults as we see them undergo through these emotions and we're like, yeah, okay, they're like, they're a child. They don't know how to deal with their own emotions, it's fine. One day they'll grow up and they'll be able to understand their own emotions better and they will be able to do it better. Yet, somehow, adults are the exact same. We still use the word hate all the time, for anything and everything. We are petty, we let ourselves hate blatantly to be devoured by the word and by its meaning as we use it without thinking. Once you start hating, it's extremely hard to stop and it's so easy to push our own bottled up anger on others that we forget why we truly hate them. As adults, we end up starting to think that we know how to love or we know how to hate because we have been experiencing these feelings more often so we think we're capable of dealing with them better but truly we don't. We use the word hate without actually truly meaning the one form of hate. And again, it just becomes a habit to just slam something this strong onto everything just because we feel the tiniest bit of discomfort against it. For example, personally, I've said that I've hated doing doing the dishes. I've hated the way clothes looked on me. I've hated people. I've hated crowds, myself, the world. But it never truly felt like it was the same hate. Yes, I do agree that hate is a universal feeling, so you feel the same hate towards everything, but it is measured differently. For example, I do not hate doing the dishes as much as I hated myself growing up. And again, I'm going to come back to the fact that Using a word is extremely important. The way we use words is extremely important. Using some different words have a huge impact on your life because of the negativity that they can bring. Like, there's this book that I've been reading, which is from Miguel Ruiz. 
I believe. I'm sorry if I butchered that name. You guys know I'm not good with pronunciation. And basically, the book is called The Four Agreements, where in it he talks about all of the things that the mind is capable of doing and how agreeing with yourself on four different things might end up saving your own soul from yourself. Mind you, I am still reading that book, so I will be trying to reference it a bit in the next episodes for you guys to still be able to get along with me in it. But there's this quote that really truly stuck with me. He said that by using the word, like a word in itself, I put a smell, a spell on you. My words are magic because the moment they leave my lips, they become a spell. And by talking to you, by giving you my word, I put you under my spell. And then he goes on explaining how our words are truly the primary definition we give of all reality. And that often it can either improve or decrease our reality in some in certain ways because truly if i start using my words i could have an impact on your day and that would be changing your reality he also explains that the humans are the only ones capable of having such intricate languages and being capable of the word so we need to be truly mindful of the words we use, of the different connections that we make between the words. In today's world, it is very easy to forget that each and every letter of each and every words that you pronounce in each and every sentence is a work of art that has been crafted within thousands of years, and that these words are truly magical because Using your word and using your voice changes the reality. If I'd come up to you and I'd tell you, okay, today you don't look good. What would be your reaction? You'd be annoyed, you'd be scared, you'd be angry, something of the sort. You'd feel discomfort. That would be you. That would be something that goes deep in you. My word has had an effect on you and it will probably affect you for the rest of the day. You'd probably go back to your to your room or to your house and change yourself or go to the bathroom and wipe off or put on more makeup or even just change something about yourself. But truly, when I'm talking, I probably didn't mean it to be mean to you or probably didn't even mean it because of you because I could say anything and each and everything that I say could be influenced by my own state of self because it is my own emotional state I'm going on and on and on and blabbering about this but truly it is the power of the word and that's what this series is about The power of words, the way we use our words, is extremely, extremely important. Today, by talking to you, I put a spell on you. Maybe the way that I talk, or maybe what I'm saying is making you guys like or dislike me. Either way, I put a spell on you to feel an emotional reaction towards what I'm saying. So, using the word hate is primarily negative, which is bad, indeed, it is very bad, but how can hate be useful? I'm the type of person who always looks at something and asks herself, how can I make something useful? How can I make whatever discomfort I'm feeling or annoyance that I'm having, something more. How can I use it for me? How can I do something of it? How can I make it better? And I've been searching for the word hate. Hate can actually be useful. I don't know if you've ever hated anybody, but when you hate someone, you feel this 
entire powerful emotion running through your body. It is there and it is completely engulfing you. It is powerful. Not only the word, but the emotional state in itself is powerful. So what if we used hate constructively? How, how can we make constructive hate? Because the power of hate can actually push mountains. It has been proven actually in history that love conquers all. Okay. Love is beautiful. Love does this, this and that. Love pushes people to do very dumb stuff for one another. But hate... Pure hatred has never been less powerful than love. No. The power that we use our hatred for. Hatred can push you to speak up. It can push you to do something, to act upon it. Because it just gives you this one power and this one need to do something. So... Clear away from the destructive expression of anger that we usually have. And try to use your own hate as a powerful fuel. As someone who has spent most of her life hating how she looked, hating her own self, hating her own mind. God's sake, I've hated a lot of things about me, trust me. But I finally found the answer. I am allowed to hate myself. I'm allowed to hate every single thing about my being. But I am only allowed to hate myself if this hate can turn me into putting this fuel to grow into the new version of me. A version of me that cannot be hated. A version of me that even I, my own self, my worst critic, could not hate. And that is how I feel like the word hate should be used. It is my very, it is a very positive outtake on it, but I wanted to feel true within the word hate. Because I'm kind of tired of using the word hate negatively, and I am trying truly to find better ways to use my words. So, this series is here for you and I to remind ourselves that words are important. And that the way you use them and the way you put them out there for both you and the world can change a lot. To finish this episode, I actually wanted to recommend you guys, this time, not a person, not a TED talk, but a poem. Actually my favorite poem, which interestingly enough talks both about love and hate, which is actually very interesting when you think about it. So I'm going to read you guys the poem and then I'm going to talk to you about it a bit. So love is a word that is constantly heard. Hate is a word that is not. Love, I am told, is more precious than gold. Love, I have heard, is hot. But hate is the verb that to me is superb, and love just a drug on a mart. For any kitty from school can love like a fool, but hating, my boy, is an art. This poem is from Ogden Nash. It is called Of Love and Hate. And... I really like it because I feel like not only it is my favorite poem, but also it wraps us, it wraps up uh, pretty nicely this little meaning of the word series. Uh, I'll probably do a few more episodes on it sometime. I never know, but I feel like the way he describes it. So Arjun Nash is an American poet that was very much known for his very small poems about life, but also about emotions. He had a way of talking about emotions, but also about doing it with humor that was not 
often seen through poets at the time. And I feel like the way he describes it, how both love and hate are both beautiful, but it is easier to love than to hate. But to hate good is to hate like an art, it is to do it well. And once again, that's probably what I will encourage you to do. So instead of encouraging you to love, I'm encouraging you to hate. But to hate with purpose, to hate with the belief that hating something so deep will push you to do better. So I'm not going on telling you to start hating your neighbours and to <laughs> hate their child who plays the flute at like 3am. But I am telling you to often look at the hate that you possess already and to ask yourself how you can turn it into art and into something that will enable you to do better. I will post this poem on the podcast Instagram and if you don't follow us yet, um, the podcast Instagram is Athena's Life Podcast. Uh, same for our Spotify and Amazon Premium account. If I, mm, I'm, I'm sure it's that. I, I think I know it's that. <laughs> I'm not sure. But I believe that's it for me this week. So I hope you have a wonderful week and see you next time. Bye.